In this video, we're brewing with the Hario Switch Immersion Dripper. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this episode, we're taking a closer look at the Hario Switch, which is basically their version of an immersion dripper. Now, there's a few immersion drippers already on the market. Um, talking about Buena Vida, we're talking about Clever Dripper, uh, the Gina Brewer as well. The Hario Switch has been on the market for quite some time now. We just haven't had the opportunity to get around and actually use it. Um, however, there, it's a brewer that we actually saw quite a lot in the World Brewers Cup, for example, in Milan, right? So that kind of made us a bit curious. Uh, we've been test brewing with it and we want to share our favorite recipe with it um, and also some kind of pros and cons that comes with using this kind of brewer. So first of all, the recipe. Now, we should say that the switch comes in a few different sizes. Uh, we actually ordered the smaller one, but we got the larger one. That's just how it is. Um, what we're doing here is that we're dosing 20 grams of coffee, and that is ground to a micron of 920. So a little bit coarser than what we're used to, but we're also brewing a little bit more coffee than what we're used to as well. Now the water that we're using sits at 92 degrees Celsius and we're going to make one quick continuous pour. Now one of the critiques uh, towards cone brewers that I've had in the past is that it's hard to make sure that you're saturating all of that coffee evenly and I think to be fair with an immersion version like this it's actually easier so we can be fairly sure that we actually have saturated all of the coffee beans. Now we're gonna pour up to 340 grams of water. And that pour is a 30 second continuous pour, right? Basically just looking at the coffee bed, making sure that all of that coffee is saturated. Now this gives us a brew ratio of one to 17, which is actually the exact same brew ratio we use for a cupping. Now, a lot of people, when they brew with this, they use the device very similar to what we would be doing when we're cupping, for example, which would be steeping for about three, four minutes, and then kind of releasing and let it, letting it go. We find that actually a shorter steep time is benefiting the brew, so it makes it a little bit cleaner, uh, tastes a little bit better. So at 110, we break the crust exactly as we do if there was a cupping. And we don't want to stir because if we stir, we're actually going to create way too much agitation because we have filled up the filter with so much water. That means we're going to have a natural agitation as soon as we're opening it up. So at 1.30, one and a half minute, we're going to just open it up and let it go down, right? So very, very simple, basic recipe. Uh, we're adding a bit more water than we, what we're used to, and we're looking for a target TDS that is in the lower range. So we're gonna be closer to about 120 here. Uh, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna let this go down. Uh, we're gonna take some proper measurements um, and then we're gonna get back to you talking about how is it tasting, what do we think about this brewer and what can we recommend in terms of you guys using it at home. We're back. Um, first, a few details about the brew itself. So we're ending up at a TDS of 1.25. Again, with a ratio of 20 to 340 grams of coffee, uh, which means we're extracting quite a lot of this coffee, at least more than what we're used to here at April. Now, when it comes to taste, and what we're finding here is that it's a very sweet cup of coffee, it's a very balanced cup of coffee. We decided to use our natural processed uh, native heirloom uh, coming out of Ethiopia from our SEPTA project, a single farmer. Um, concept and we find a lot of the flavors that we usually get in this coffee so it's very sweet slightly tropical you have a lot of these kind of strawberry notes in it um, so is it a good cup of coffee yes it's a solid cup of coffee however and this is something that I got a lot with this brewer and I've been testing it for for quite some time and I've also been testing other people's recipes and I've been tasting coffee brewed with it for for several years both in competitions and outside of competitions and for me there's always been this kind of rubbery taste to it uh, it could be just a, a you know me knowing that there's some kind of silica material here that 
I think is causing a little bit of effect to the taste of the coffee. Uh, it could be the kind of metal ball that is in the center that is making sure that it doesn't drain through, that is also giving off a little bit of taste. Um, again, there's something that I find when we're working with lighter roasted coffees, the way that we do here at April, when we're, roasting, uh, when we're brewing with a darker roasted coffee, you probably don't find it as much just because the coffee is roasted heavier, so it's harder to detect those kind of fine details in it. But we're very curious to hear what you think about that. Have you experienced that in this brewer? I think overall it's a, it's a fine brewer. It makes a solid cup of coffee. We're still going to gravitate more towards flatbed brewer and something that is in immersion. Um, a cupping on its own still tastes much better than, for example, this would do, right? So we don't necessarily see the benefit of using any kind of switch model, whether there's a Clever Dripper or a Bonavita, as in it doesn't necessarily produce a tastier cup of coffee than the alternatives. However, it's a very easy, consistent way to brew coffee at home, especially, for example, in this case, if you want to brew larger volume. So we see the use for it is maybe not for April and it's maybe not the brewer would take out to make the tastiest cup of coffee we ever can, which to be fair is what we're trying to do here. Uh, so overall, it's an interesting cup of coffee. We're going to have more discussions on our Patreon about this, and we would love to hear your feedbacks. We know you guys have been using it. Share your favorite recipes. We'll be more than happy to benchmark them with what we have here as well. And with that, we want to thank you so much for watching. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.